Kim here with Little Biz Resources and today or for this video we're going to talk GIMP and print on demand. Okay, so we're going to design some designs for print on demand using GIMP and GIMP is GNU Image Manipulation Program, G-I-M-P, right? This is free. There'll be a link down below that you can click on, download it for free. And it's, you know, if you're going for the no, completely no co cost option for our series here. Now I will say I am not well versed in GIMP, right? I use Photoshop pretty much all the time. So I'm a little bit better at that than I am with GIMP. And I do not know if GIMP will be able to automate. So that's something else we're going to learn before next week. But for now, let's go ahead and design some stuff in here. So there are two types of designs that you're going to do. And let me show you Printful real quick so you can see what I am talking about. So Printful has a couple different designs. Let's go to the men's shirts real quick. So they have, we have, um, in fact, I think we do tank tops so you can see that, that particular thing. So you have this one where it's an all over and then these other ones, which they don't show on here, but this one I think is one that is a, what they call directed garment, right? In fact, there it is right there. So you put your design right in the middle there. And so if you look at this, this is weird with the box there. You know, your design here would have been much easier if it was just your design here, but they made it nice and still looks kind of gives you an idea of the space on it. And the reason why it's important to understand is that if you were to just to do like some sort of um, repeat design and just repeat it in the square, it would look weird, right? It would just be a square of your repeating design. So these are meant to be a little bit different. So you got to keep that in mind when you're designing your, your different items. So we're not going to do a repeating design for this one. Instead, we're just going to do an image because that's really simple to show and it gives you a little bit of the basics. So we're going to say new and here we're going to make sure that this is in inches and if you check the website, you'll see that I have um, a shortened, like you can come into Printful here and you can come down to file guidelines and you can get this. Well, I'm trying to do a shortened, like quick reference here. So you could try to get all the file sizes and like, here's all the different shirts for the men's shirts, 12 by 16, 12 by 16, 12 by 16, 12 by 16, 12 by 16. So we're going to make a 12 by 16 because we know it can go on a lot of different files. So we're going to 12 by 16. And then advanced options, I usually do 150 by 150 and that's to keep the file smaller. And because that's the minimum, minimum that you need for printing, you can go up to like 300. Some, some places do higher, but for Printful, let's just keep it at 150. And that should be good for marketplaces as well. So color space, you have RGB or grayscale. We want RGB. Then we're gonna leave it as 8-bit. And then we're gonna, gonna skip. This is all, should be all the way it is. So if it's not sRGB, srgb and then fill with transparency we don't want the background color yet because we want to pick that or in my case i don't want a background because it's going to go straight on the shirt so then we say okay and then here i'm just going to in import uh an image to go onto it so i'm going to say file and i'm going to say open as layers and i'm just going to do this one here i think let me just double check now, if I were putting it on a dark colored shirt, I might want to do it with the lighter one and then a light colored shirt with the darker one. This one, I think, is because it's light enough. It could go on both light and dark. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. You can change your size if you want to by right clicking and you can scale the layer. Like if I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, I could try to make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll go 1800. I'll keep it, keep it the way it is and say scale and see that makes it a little bit bigger. So that's how you can kind of resize it there. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to do it as well, but I am not that savvy to this again. So I recommend Googling or jumping on YouTube and finding some stuff if you want to do specific things. Then for this, for our purposes, this is done. So I can actually um, export as, and then I would want to keep save it. Okay. So I already have this from Photoshop, so I'm not going to do it again. So now let's, we've done this one as a, a directed garment. Let's create our repeating swatch. So I'm going to say discard changes. I'm going to say file. I'm going to say new. And like I did in Photoshop is that I did a 10 inch by 10 inch. And I usually do because it's a repeating one. I'll start with the 300 and then I'll resize the image if I need to later because 300 pixels is kind of big, right? Or yeah, pixels per inch is kind of big. So I'm going to do 10 inch by 10 inch and it's going to be my repeating swatch. I'm going to say everything else stays the same. I still want to fill with transparency. I'm going to say, okay. All right, now we have our template file, right? We have our template swatch that we're going to make into a repeating file. So we need to bring in our first image. Now I'm going to tell you that it's easier to decide 
like what you want. You can do this similar to what I did in the Photoshop one. You can design what you want and then you can offset it and fix it. Right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. We're going to say file and we're going to open as layers. Now it's important that if you figure out a way to override this, you keep the same size, right? We're trying to keep that same size. So we're going to go ahead and do this and say, okay. And then we're actually going to scale the layer down. We're going to go to about half the size say scale and then I'm going to kind of move it around possibly there we go now if you want to you can look here and see if there are different things that you can do um, there's like here's a rotate tool so you could rotate it if you wanted to you know so it could kind of rotate a little bit I mean I think that's probably what I want to do so I'm going to rotate it and I'll put that one there. Now I'm going to bring in another one and open these layers and let's bring in a light one here and I'm actually going to move it first and then I think I'm going to make that a little smaller too but we're not going to make it as small as the other one so we're going to make it a thousand here say scale and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate that one as well but maybe the other way and then I'm going to go ahead and just play with this for a little bit so I'm going to play with this for a tiny bit and then um then after I get what I want set then I'm going to and again you're going to want to do this better with yours it's just I'm more of a photoshop person so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to layer and we go to transform and then I'm going to say offset and then I'm going to do by width by two and height by two okay and then I'm going to say offset now, oh I did that wrong hold on so now I actually need to merge all of these together because I need them to be so I'm going to merge down and I'm going to merge down now if I wanted to keep these here I would have to do a duplicate but I want to keep I want to actually offset this one so I'm going to say layer I'm going to say transform offset by what I did and then say offset. Now this is technically a repeating file and you see the way that's done. So I'm going to do this again for you to show you a different way. So now I would fill this in more if I wanted to. Now because the images weren't in the center, you don't get to see the repeat as well. So I want to show it to you when it's just as a center file and where everything should be the same. And I'm going to bring that in um, file open as layers. I'm going to do that one. I'm going to leave that one there. It's in the middle. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge down. So now it's this size, right? So I merged that the top layer onto this bottom layer. So that bottom layer is the right size. And I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to say duplicate layer. And that's because I want to keep the one in the middle. And we're going to see what happens. So I say layer. I'm going to say transform. Offset. And then I did the by width by two, by height by two. I'm going to say offset. Now you can see it's a full repeating file here, right? All right. So now the other thing that I would want to do is possibly add in a background. So if you remember, I talked about how you could create the file starting with the background. You can do that. And it probably would have been a little bit easier to do that if it was a solid color. You can fill this in with another layer in the background with another repeating pattern. In fact, let's go ahead and um, do that. So I'm going to... Actually, I'm just going to open first and check this file real quick and then I'm going to pull it open and I'll be right back. Okay, so it took me a while to find it because they have a weird opening system, but I found it and this is, I think I want to do this background, but in order for me, this is already a repeating pattern. So in order for me to add that to my repeating pattern, they need to be the same, same size. So we're going to do 10 by 10. It's already 300 p um, pixels per inch PPI. So I'm going to say scale. Okay, and then I'm going to see if I can copy this. No, it's not going to let me. I broke it. I'll be back. Okay, so yeah, you probably saw it skip around because it's being really slow. So I've added a new layer here, moved it to the bottom. The bottom is behind everything else. Now, I'm not sure I like this too much, but I'm going to go ahead and paste it into here. And that's because it's the same size, so it should be fine. Mm. I don't like that floating selection thing. I don't know what that means. So here... New layer. That's fine. 
delete layer. Okay, well, we're just gonna go ahead and save this then. Save as. That's a weird XCF, huh? Weird, it's giving it, well, it'll, it does it fine, so I can see it. I think I should be able to merge all of these down still. My computer's going really slow. So anyway, you'll see that that's the background of it. And since it's not working right, we're going to remove it. And we're just going to um, leave this as possibly a fill. And we're going to do a background color fill. So I'm on this other background again. And let's see what color it is. White. So that's on a white background. Now, typically, you don't need to do white. So let's say that if I just wanted to put that on, on a white outfit, that's fine. You're going to need to read the instructions if you want to use white. White is typically one you kind of want to steer away from for print on demand because of the fact that it ends up being, um, I don't know what the right word is, but it ends up being a problem. So let's go ahead and change it to, well, let's just change, leave it to black. Let's see if it will switch these maybe. There we go. So we are now we have a black. I like black better actually. Now I will tell you that a lot of the designs are white backgrounds. And so because they're white backgrounds, when you print on black, if it's when it stretches out, so you want to make sure you get the right size basically. So if it stretches out, you'll see that lighter background. It'll like kind of make it grayish instead. But this is really good for us. So I would want to keep this as my repeating background. So now let's go ahead and put it in the right file size for say um, a men's t-shirt. Okay. So now before we get to the point where we are um, doing those the, the file sizes, let's go ahead and merge these down so they're all one layer. So merge down, merge down. So now this is our entire image. Now typically we would file, in fact we'll say file and we're going to export as and we're going, it says untitled PNG so I'm just going to title it. Where's it going in my documents? Let's just go to Let's go to my F drive because I don't have any things for videos there. So we'll put um, rainbow. It's a it's like a rainbow galaxy thing. Skull on black repeating file. Okay, so I'm going to do that and export it so I have it. And I don't think I need to change anything here. I'm just going to export it. Do, 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 and then we've exported it. And now we can go to the next steps, which is we're going to use this as a tile, right? So we're going to, let's close this one really quick. Discard. And we're going to go to, we go to filter, filters. We're going to map. And then we go to tile. And now this, you're like, wait, what size do I put here? Well, let's go back over to my quick sheet here and we're doing it all over one so here's one let's do that men's tank top 27 by 34 inch so we're going to do we're going to change this to inches and we're going to go 27 by 34 oh i have it locked so we're going to do 27 no nope, 27 by 34 and then we're going to say we're going to create a new image we're going to say okay And there it is. So that would be our file for the tank top. So we would save this file, export it as a PNG and put it on, or JPEG, either one. And we could put it on, um, in Printful for the t-shirt for the tank top. Okay. So that is pretty much, it's really not difficult. The difficult part is deciding on the design, right? Which we talked about in a prior video is like, you know, how inspiration we talked about, like how to find out what's selling, what works, blah, blah, blah. Then the next video would be, um, or was, it was uh, where to find elements. Like I designed this from a Pixabay image. I took a Pixabay skull and then I took an image, a background color off of Creative Fabrica. I overlaid it. Of course, I did that in Photoshop because I don't know how to do that in GIMP. But I did it. That's how I did it, right? So if you can, if you are going to be using GIMP, you need to go ahead and do some more searches, figure out how you want to do stuff. Or if you're like, hey, I just needed to put things together. I'm getting my images from somewhere else. This is really easy, right? So that's the basics of GIMP. If you have questions, if you're like, hey, I can't find something, 
put it, go ahead and post it in, you know, on this video, post it in the Facebook group, come live on Thursdays and we'll see what we can do. GIMP is not one that I'm an expert at, right? I'm not an expert at anything for that matter, but that's the whole point of this. You don't have to be an expert and you can still do all of this. So we can still make our designs. So we have the, from last week or from the last videos, we now have gone through, okay, we're making our designs. Your goal for this next week or for however long is to now create some designs because once you've got some designs created, I do not know if this will work in GIMP. It might, we're going to, I got to figure it out, but I know in Photoshop, we will definitely be able to automate it. Okay. So if we can't automate it in GIMP, it'll be a little bit more manual work for you, but that's not the end of the world. And then for Photoshop, we can, I've already tested it in Photoshop and we can automate in that. So the next level is going to be automating what, what we can or creating our files, right? So that's what we're going to be doing in the next one. And then after that, we'll be loading it up into whichever platform it is. So that is it for this one. If you, again, if you have questions, you can hop into the Facebook group. You can post them on the video. You can come live on Thursdays. <laughs> See, this is what happens when I don't do it with a, with a PowerPoint, right? Um, and there will be links in the description for various resources. I do recommend you take a look at Creative Fabrica. I'll have a link to the free assets that they have. Um, I also recommend that you, um, you know, if you have, if you need to get GIMP, get that and get started on that and start learning it. And then there'll be additional resources as well below, you know, start, if you're going to be loading on Printful, make sure you get a Printful account link for that. It's in the description. And if you are going to be selling on Etsy, make sure you open your Etsy account. You can get 40 free listings through in the link in the description. They are, for whatever reason, just automatically suspending new accounts right now. Not, I mean, all of the ones I know of. So if that happens to you, reach out. I have an entire like how to, how to fix that, you know, how to like, but I think they have a ticket system. Now you can just submit something to them and they'll even give you instructions. So it's a process. So get started now. So you'll be ready to start selling. Now, if you're going to be li listing up to the marketplaces, we'll be talking about those next week with the files and everything else. So that's it for this one. If you liked the video, please, you know, give it a like. So it'll spread to more people. And of course, check out the entire series in our playlist. And I'll have a link to that in the description as well. And thanks for watching.